What's going on growers, it's James Prigioni coming to you live from Jersey. Sometimes it's hard for me to remember that this was just all grass, your standard backyard. But I'll tell you, what I don't miss about that was mowing, putting in the work, the effort, the time, and getting nothing in return. Now, I put some work in, yeah, but it's well worth it. Let's go. Most people just see their backyard as a patch of grass or something else to take care of, but not me. I don't think that's the way to look at it. I see it as an opportunity, a way to invest, like a fruit tree here. It's an investment in our future, in our health, in our wellness, something that we can have control over. This persimmon tree is growing fantastic. It's got more persimmons on it than it ever has, which is exciting. We've worked towards building the soil with a thick organic mulch. We even have some nice tomatoes coming up still in October, trying to make the most of our time the opportunities we have. I've also got some tomatoes behind me over here that I'm gonna grab some and I'll bring you for that. Something that was important for me to get me to change from just having a grass to growing a garden was the idea that everything accumulates. When I had a lawn, all I was accumulating was grass and weeds. Now that I have a garden, I'm accumulating food and bettering my health. Also, I'm building soil fertility, so every year we're getting more. I've accumulated more knowledge and experience, which is valuable, especially when you're growing food. For instance, I've learned not to just push design elements onto a location because I want to do it. You'll notice I don't have swales in here because it's just not practical, but I do have a raised bed, and that is practical for this location and this circumstance because I have these trees growing around me. The roots are deep into the ground. I don't want to affect my fruit trees that I have growing and injure them to grow more food, but I still want to grow here. So this raised bed works perfectly. It's practical, it's easy to reach into, and I have this free local resource of black leaf mulch. You'll notice I do have some perlite on top here because I covered the whole thing with a bag of happy frog soil, almost as like a mulch because it's real good at holding and retaining water. So we're trying to use everything to work together to grow as much food as we possibly can, make it practical, make it easy, make it rewarding. In this raised bed, I've got all stuff planted in here that is very cold hardy, things like mizuna, things like Swiss chard, and I've got some ideas to keep it almost over the whole entire winter. So I'll share that with you in future videos, but I wanna grab one of these Prigioni apples first. I love these apples. This is the apple tree that we grew from seed. So delicious, so yummy, a little spritey, sweet, great flavor though overall. Let me try one. A little small, but still packed with flavor. The funny thing is Tuck will eat these. He doesn't eat apples from the store, but he'll eat these. Tuck wants some? We're in fall now. The Prigioni apples are starting to ripen. Looks like Tuck's like snacking on them too. And I love these apples. They're ones that we grew from seed if you haven't seen the video. So they got nice little color to them. They're spritey, not super sweet, but not like sour apples. Really good flavor. Tuck seems to like them, like snacking on them. You may have noticed I have another raised bed right here that I haven't filled yet. I've got some ideas that I want to share with you of something I'm going to fill it with besides just the black leaf mulch because if you can't get that local resource like me, you might be wondering what to fill your bed with. What I planted in here was all stuff that I started on my own. So these are all different seeds, uh, different kinds of plants that I'm going to be transplanting into that bed and into the greenhouse as well so I can be growing for as long as I possibly can. Because once you start viewing your backyard as not a lawn anymore but a food pantry, somewhere you can get free local food, the best stuff you can ever eat, you never want to go back. Even though it's still October, we're still harvesting some tomatoes. It's convenient to be able to eat tomatoes from, what was it, early, late July, early August, all the way to now. Got some nice lemon boys here, which is a hybrid tomato. And I grow hybrids, heirlooms, open pollinated, all different kinds. The heirlooms have great flavor. They're great to save seed from. But sometimes these hybrids are ones that will last later into the season. This one right here is a nice heirloom, though. This is the Rosa de Bern, one that I love growing. One with great flavor, great color, and a good late producer for us as well. When I put this new food forest in a couple years ago, I made a video series about it, and I hope that some of you put your food forest in at the same time, and you're at the same point as me now. One thing I wanted to share is these strawberries that I have planted here. These ones were my favorite variety. So what I did was allow them to expand and expand more and more. Some of the other varieties, I kept them in a smaller area so they're not spread too much. But these ones, these are the Shuxin. I love the flavor. They were better than every other one I had. So I just want those to expand and I'm gonna move some of these into the old food forest as well. Something that's cool in here is we've got a couple hazelnuts throughout the yard that I saw coming up. So the squirrels and the chipmunks have been greedy this year. They took a lot of our hazelnuts, but they're moving them around and planting them in different locations. I'll probably dig this hazelnut up, pot it, and then maybe plant it somewhere else in the yard because I don't want the same scenario of having some of my hazelnuts in the middle like I did in there, shading out some of my other things. 
But again, that was the garden I put in a long time ago when I was a little less experienced. Now that I have more experience, more knowledge that's accumulated over time, now I can make the right decisions the first time, making it easier for myself in the long run. Something you'll notice as I go through this garden is that you won't really see any weeds here. That's what that thick wood chip mulch does. It provides the perfect environment for these young peach trees and all other fruit trees too. You'll notice no weeds really under here for competition, which makes it a great, great growing environment. Let me grab some of these tomatoes. And tomatoes are unique. They're one of those plants that likes growing in the same section every single year. I've got a number of nice ones on this. This is the tomato that I saved the seeds from because this was my favorite variety. This is also a uh, heirloom variety, open pollinated variety. It's not a hybrid. So we, don't, we know that next year we're gonna get the same tomato we planted this year. This might not look like the healthiest plant right now, but it produced a lot of tomatoes for us. We're in October now, so anything we get is definitely a treat. We wanna make sure we're taking advantage of all the ripe fruit, picking all of it, eating all of it, giving it away, because that's the most fun part. Amongst all the fruit trees, the strawberries, the blueberries, the tomatoes, we also have other things growing like carrots, some stuff that's gonna last us later into the season. We'll pick those once it starts getting much colder and they start sweetening up even more. I've got other things planted that are gonna be later into the season. Some Swiss chard here, some beautiful orange Swiss chard, some Ford hook Swiss chard. We also have some Asian hardy greens planted over here, some spinaches. So we're trying to make sure we're gonna extend our harvest. What surprises me about gardening and blows me away is every year about this time of the year, I start to realize a lot of my mistakes, a lot of things I can do different. And that opens me up to so many different ideas that I have for next year. A few things that come to mind for me right now is that next year I plan on growing a lot more uh, flowers adding flowers to the garden, not just for the beauty, but to bring in more beneficial insects. I also plan on making more and more compost. I've already started a couple compost piles, but I plan on having as much homemade compost for next year as possible and using more compost teas to aid in the production of my healthy, natural, delicious, food. Gardening has also taught me to be so thankful for everything I have, especially this fresh organic food, to see the true value in it because if you want to buy it, it's expensive and you can never get this good quality at the store. They just don't sell it. It's like my favorite quote by Bill Mollison that says, if you want organic food, you've got to grow organic food. There's no other way around it. You really can't trust anyone when it comes to your own food production and your own health. You gotta do it yourself. Here we have some Amana orange tomatoes. And these ones look pretty good. It's a nice late producer as well. Got one more back there I'm gonna grab. And this is right next to a Bella apple tree. You can probably not even almost see the apple tree next to it. It's leaning onto it because the weight of the tomato just got so heavy. I love harvesting the food from the garden and eating it and sharing it with all of you, but that's not really the most important part. The important part is to grow, to learn. Because if we're growing in more than just uh, understanding, if we're growing in experience, in faith, then we're just gonna get better and better every year, harvesting more and more. Over here, I have this pepper plant, and I'm not even sure what variety it is. It looks like a hot pepper. I don't remember my planting a hot pepper at all, but it really looks like one. I, I'm waiting for it to get some color. The amount of peppers on it is just insane. It's completely loaded with peppers. And I've tried one of them before, and they didn't taste hot. This one looks like it's getting some color, maybe. Let me try it though and see if it is a hot pepper or not. I don't want to talk eating this one. I feel like it's just an ugly sweet pepper. Let me see though. Yeah. It has a flavor like a hot pepper would, but it's not hot at all. So if you guys know what variety this is, let me know. I don't think I planted any hot peppers, and I don't remember planting this one, but it's got this weird, weird shape to it. Almost looks like a Carolina Reaper pepper or something, but still loaded with peppers. Not a very good flavor though, I'll tell you that much. At my feet here, you'll notice I have another row of strawberries. I have three rows in total, all between rows of fruit trees. This variety, you'll notice though, hasn't expanded as much I, because I've kept it tighter. I like this one, but not as much as I like the Shuxin. I believe this is the Seascape variety. They're pretty good, but they're not just as good as the other ones. While I was over here grabbing some tomatoes and some peppers, I noticed this monster carrot that I never harvested in the center there. The thing is a beast. I wanna see what it looks like if I pull it up, how big it is, and if Tuck wants a snack. It feels like a pretty big one. Yeah, that thing is a monster. Look at the size of it. Yeah, it's no Joe Carrot. 
This is one that I planted in the spring, and it looks like Tuck already wants to get his teeth sank into it. This thing will be a couple meals for Tuck. Really is a big one. Tuck's really enjoying it. He's trying to get up at it. It must be a good one. I want to crack it, give him a little piece, but I want to try it as well. Just rub some of the dirt off. Like they say, dirt never hurt. So maybe just a little sand in there. I'll live. Pretty good. Good carrot flavor, not super sweet. I want to wait for these other carrots. Later in the winter, when the ground gets closer to freezing, they get really sweet, the sugars come out. So some of these over here, this row that I planted in between the zucchini, while the zucchini was finishing up, I planted this row of carrots. Tuck already came through and grabbed some of them. So I got to try to keep them away because he's harvesting them early. But these ones are going to be nice producers and they're going to be good and super sweet once uh, once the weather changes more. Let's see how these ones taste still though right now. Good flavor, not super sweet either. So we'll just be patient on these. Carrots are always my favorite in the late fall, late, late fall. So we'll make sure we make the most of them with that. Then I have some other spinach and stuff planted here. A bunch of uh, dragon tongue beans. And this Swiss chard has just been <laughs> amazing for us this year the base on this thing just has blown me away how big it's gotten you can see all the spots that we had picked it previously but man this thing is really huge base i think this is going to produce really well for us late in the season that's today's video growers thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed it hope you got something out of it this video was more to give you an update on how everything was doing all the gardens are doing how tuck is doing as you can see, he's definitely enjoying himself. And to let you know that everything accumulates, we're either accumulating the good or we're accumulating the bad. If you guys enjoyed the video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, share with your friends. Don't forget to check out the merch down low. Tuck and James will be back to you real soon with another one. We out. It's funny, with Tuck, we don't even need a ball sometimes. He'll find his own cucumber, and then we'll just play with that. It's like a ball. And we've got this nice alleyway going down here that I've got some cool ideas with I'll show you this winter. But Tuck likes playing with the cucumber just as if it was like a ball for a dog. Let me grab it from Because <laughs> once I let him go, he's just going to start eating it. Oh, good boy. Oh, there he goes. The good thing about using a cucumber as a ball or a toy for Tuck is that he gets the snack on it after he's finished. I'm sure that end was probably a little bitter too. Because this isn't a good cucumber. It's one that was on a plant that was finishing up but he looks like he's enjoying a little, but we'll get him a better one.